All right, guys, so I just want to do a quick little video on how to fish a jig for bass. So right here we have a, I believe it's a quarter or half ounce jig. This is a rattling jig. So it does have a rattle. Most do not. Paired with that, we have a bandito bug in June bug color. And to fish a jig, it is very, very simple. You're going to want somewhere between 12 and 17 pound fluorocarbon and a mid to fast gear ratio reel. Now this is an 8.5 to 1 Shimano Corrado DC. You don't need that. I throw jigs on 7.5 to 1. Really you could even throw a jig on 6.5 to 1. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to be using a 7 foot 3 favorite defender, medium heavy, fast action rod with the 8.5 to 1 Shimano Corrado DC. Starting out, pretty simple. Tie your jig on, go ahead and pick your color. And I have videos that you can look up that help you decide the color. As you can see, today's water is, it's not too dirty, it's not too clear, it's in that murky transitional phase. But we are in spring, so dark colors do really well, as well as red. But when you're fishing a jig in this color water, this black and blue is perfect. Your trailer can change between black and blue, Okeechobee Craw, it doesn't really matter honestly, as long as it's a dark color paired with the black and blue jig. So to fish this jig, usually during spring, summertime, you're just going to cast this out there pretty much parallel to the bank. When you're jig fishing, you're not fishing deep. Usually you're under 10 foot of water, let's just say, to be safe, depending on where you're at. So you cast it out there. There's several ways you can fish the jig. No way is necessarily wrong. Each way is dependent on your conditions, being the weather, the water, and what season you're fishing in. So, okay, we tossed it out there. It's really cold out today. The high is 50. Ice just came off this pond this morning. It was low 20 last night. So today when I'm fishing, I'm just casting out there. I'm letting it sit there for up to 30 seconds before I do anything with it. So in these colder conditions with the jig, that's what you're going to do. You're just going to let it sit there for... I don't know, 10, 15, 30 seconds. And then you can just give it just a little, little bit of movement. You can do something like that. If the water's warmer, the fish are more active. You, know, you can pop it faster, maybe two, three, four times. And let's go ahead and reel in here again. Let's cast again. Here's another way you can fish the jig. Let it toss it out, let it sink for about I don't know, 10 seconds, all depending on how deep your water is and how finicky your fish are. But you toss it out there, just swim it real nice and slow. You can give it a little bit of movement in between. And another way from there, when you're reeling, instead of reeling in constantly, just give it real slow pulling motions. See how I took my hand off the reel there? And cast this back up there. So you have to be very careful when you are pulling like this. That once you get so far, you want to have your hand at least very close to the reel. Because say it's right here and I have to catch up on slack, I have to go like this. Right? So if my hand is way out here over here and I'm just doing it like this, by the time I catch up slack to hook that fish, that fish might be off of there. So that's something you really want to oh, look at that. Catching all kinds of salad today. All right, anyways. <laughs> so most of the time you're fishing the jig, it's not gonna be very fast. Um, you can speed it up, like I said, you can do little movements like this. You can pull it far distances when it's cold and the f fish are finicky. And if you're in that spawn season, you're tossing up into what may be bass beds. You toss it out there. Make sure your line is tight, right? You don't want to have this loose line for this. You're just going to give it a dangle. Take your rod and very aggressively jerk it where there's tension, just like this. Hopefully that's in frame. Another way you can do it if you're trying to fish a bass bed, for example, 
you can hold your rod out just a little bit and tap the end of it to get that really shaking motion in the water. Now what that's doing with your jig is just making a real subtle, consistent, fast motion. And being that this has a rattle on it, that makes a lot of noise. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to catch anything today. I've been out here for about three hours now, just at a local pond messing around. And, um, yeah, it's, it's probably going to snow again tomorrow, so the probability of me catching anything today is very, very slim. But, just figured I would do a little jig video. Now you can see, here we go, this might be a good demonstration. So when your jig goes down, when you have this trailer, the flanges on whatever your trailer is come up. And when you're swimming the jig, the skirt stays together. But when you jerk it and it comes down, let's see if I can get a little bit shallower water here. When it comes down, the skirt comes out. See that? I don't know if the camera will pick that up. That's really important to note. But here's like, here's a faster bounce. So that's more of like a spring, summertime. You can see the flanges on that trailer really working. And then when you get into the slower, and you're just pulling it, it just pulls right along the bottom. Not much movement. Real subtle. And then when you get into stuff, I don't know if I can do it this close. There we go, you can kind of see how that jig's just moving. And of course it would affect it in deeper water more. See how that jig just gets that little shaky motion, like it's freaking out, trying to eat something, or scared. Do it again. But you get the idea. So yeah, generally, you just cast out parallel. Now there is stuff like flipping and pitching jigs. So this right here is called flipping. You just take your line like a bow, a little bit more than an arm's length, pull it out, and say there's a bass bit right there. Bam. Bam. Maybe a little bit more line. Let's try it this time. Boom. 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 It's very accurate, and you can let that bait in really subtle. For the purposes of the video, I'm doing it a little quick. But you can see how much control you have. And of course I have gloves on, so it is a little bit harder to do this, but... And once your bait does get in the water, where you want it, these gloves do not help my purposes. You just gently let down your line. But flipping and pitching could be for another video. Today, like I said, just doing a quick video on jigs. Jigs can be fished in anything from the thickest of grass to rocks, anything. A jig should be one of your confidence baits for sure. They work in all conditions. I made videos on that, colors. Um, the, the colors from seasonal to water clarity, everything like that. But yeah, it's pretty simple. Like, I'll, I'll just make a few demonstration casts here. I'll do it a little bit faster. That way you can kind of get an idea. Uh, I also do want to note your jig trailer really does matter. You can use a jig without a trailer. The trailer is just a soft plastic that you put on your hook. Um, really this should be cut down, but I didn't care for this, so I just put it on there like that. For example, this bandito bug will have a lot less kick than something like a Guggen Bates Kraken Craw. The reason being is the, the Kraken Craw has really, really big flanges. That's what these are called. And, or if you want to call it their, their claws, I guess, claws, flanges, whatever you want to call it. Generally, they're called flanges. But the Kraken Craw has really big ones. The flanges really flutter a lot more when they're larger. So that definitely affects your jig. So if it's colder, the bass are more finicky, you certainly are going to want to use something like a bandito bug with smaller flanges. 
if you're fishing faster, fish are more aggressive, they want a bigger bait, something like the Guggen Baits Kraken Craw would do really good. So here I am, just doing a little demonstration. So you can see I'm kind of pulling slack in the line and then reeling it back up while the bait sits there. It's a really good technique for trying to fish slower. Let it sit there for a second. Sometimes what you can do too, after it's done sitting there, just reel up your slack just enough to give it a few jerks. That's worked really well for me in the past. Now, I do frequently make the mistake too of letting my hand go too far from the handle, but I mean, you're, it, that's going to happen. With the jig, you can fish it even in really thick grass. Um, you would get like a flipping jig style. It's more of a slanted football head looking jig. And the way the head's designed, it helps the bait come through the water more. And almost all skirted jigs like this have a weed guard on it, which makes it to where you can bring that jig through really thick weeds and the weeds aren't going to get caught up on your hook. So if you are fishing it in weeds and you, have, and you feel a lot of weight on the end of your line, it's probably the weed stuck on the head of the jig. What you do, you just give it a real hard pull, maybe two of them, just to get that grass off of there. Because when that jig, as you just seen when I pulled it, goes real fast and then drops down. And when it drops down and you pull it again, that grass will tend to fall off of it. I hope this video helped you. Be sure to check out shopcarls.com and check out their jigs. I personally love all Guggen Squad stuff. Guggen Squad, Guggen Baits, same thing. Um, not just because I'm affiliated, but it's, it's great quality. Honestly, if you're in the market for some jigs, like I said, head on over to shopcarls.com, type in Guggen, and check out something like the Guggen Squad Juicy Jig, the Guggen Squad Thick Jig, or the gridiron, the little juicy, there's so many options. There's also swim jigs, but that's a little bit different fishing than what we're doing here. Generally with swim jigs, you'll pair paddle tail or boot tail swim baits on them. But they all work, and they're all similar. They all work in just about any condition. Again, I hope this helped you figure out how to use the jig. One of the simplest, best baits that you could possibly use in any water condition. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. Tell your friends, get somebody new into fishing, and I will see you later.